Dr. Stones, Nathan Smith, Cyril Perkins from Dartmouth Medical School. These were the doctors that treated Joseph Smith and his leg infection. The Smiths were the preeminent scholars and intellect of their day. And here we have a Utah Brighamite church trying to continue on with the fraud. The Smiths were poor peasants and uneducated yahoos out of New England. Quite the opposite. They invented the entire idea of the Bering Strait and the Asiatic migration over from Asia into North America. That was Uncle John Smith, eminent Dartmouth scholar, introduced ancient languages into the United States, including Reformed Egyptian. So why are the Utah Mormons trying to hide Joseph and Hiram Smith's blue blood scholarly ancestry? Could it be the Brighamites simply have an inferiority complex? Or maybe their crazy polygamous blood atonement fundamentalism just renders them completely insane. Well, if you haven't been following Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell and the Preppers in Idaho, well, you're missing out on a whole lot of interesting fundamentalist murder she wrote. Dartmouth Arminianism and its impact on Hiram Smith and the Smith family. It's written by Richard Behrens. He's a Dartmouth Mormon scholar. Talks about early Dartmouth intellectual inquiry focused on philosophical and theological questions. Many of these same questions later be, would be systematically answered by the prophet Joseph Smith. His family all engaged in this Dartmouth College controversy. Fortuitously, Hiram was able to observe the crisis at Dartmouth between Calvinism and the Arminianism. Let's start with John Smith, who was born December 1752 in Raleigh, Massachusetts, to Joseph Smith and Elizabeth Palmer, both cousins of Isaiah and Mary Duty, the paternal grandparents of Prophet Joseph Smith. Cousin John Smith was soon, in 1778, he was appointed the first professor at Dartmouth. John developed the ancient language course, which included Latin, Greek, Hebrew, Chaldaic, Syriac, Assyriac, and later he added Arabic and Coptic. This is John, cousin of Joseph's grandfather, Azazel. He was also co-pastor of the college church in 1780. 1787, he began developing the theology lectures, which finally were completed in 1804, a year before Prophet Joseph Smith was born. In 1803, John Smith was recognized by Brown College with a Doctor of Sacred Theology degree of his many contributions. Smith and Wheelock were perfect matches and worked closely together. They also included an astronomy section of his natural philosophy lectures. This is John Smith's lectures, Ptolemaic, and proceeds through Newton, but ends up with interesting speculations about multiple peopled worlds and the age of the universe. Smith speculated that an infinite creator would make one perfect system. Why not many? And if many, why not millions? Early Dartmouth students of interest in Mormon studies. Solomon Spaulding, class of 1785, followed the above lecture material closely when he wrote the manuscript found in 1812. So I know everybody is claiming this Joseph Smith stole Solomon Spaulding's ideas. Well, no, Solomon Spaulding sto stole the Smith's lectures. John Smith, the cousin of Azaliel. So quite the contrary, Solomon Spaulding stole the Smith's ideas. He decided to write the tale of the origin of the Indians, beginning with two odysseys following John Smith's suggested Bering Strait crossing by land and Atlantic Sea. Oh my goodness, do you see what this means? Joseph Smith's family, his great cousin, John Smith, invented or was an early promoter the whole theory about the, the Bering Strait crossing of the Indians and then also included the Atlantic Sea crossing through the Mediterranean. This has been deleted from 
our history books, but and they relied on the Bering Strait theory, but the Bering Strait theory was invented by the Smith families. Oh my goodness, history becomes more interesting. So here's Ethan Smith, class of 1790. He included his early theological lectures of John Smith. So he studied under John Smith and wrote View of the Hebrews. Again, these ex-Mormons, are always bringing out the view of the Hebrews was copied by Joseph Smith. Not quite. Ethan copied the Smith's lectures in his creation of the book View of the Hebrews. So contrary to Joseph Smith stealing any ideas, it was everyone else that was stealing his entire family's ideas created at Dartmouth College and in which Hiram Smith attended, Stephen Mack attended, all of the Smith family were closely connected with the Dartmouth College and their curriculum in ancient theology and ancient languages. By 1811, they began a profuse writing career covering the theological prophecies. And I just want to give a shout out to the recent um, ex-Mormons ideas of view of the Hebrews and reviewing the Ethan Smith's book and claiming that Joseph Smith stole it. Quite the contrary, Ethan Smith is the plagiarizer. Ethan's many doctrinal works, such as the subject of infant baptism, women in Zion Godhead prophecy, were soon well circulated on campus immediately at Dartmouth. Okay, so all of these ideas were being percolated. All the ideas that we were taught in grammar school was invented by the Smith's family and their ancient theology and their ancient language theories. According to John Smith's widow, Susan Mason, John Smith's theology lectures represents the opus magna and his preparing for publication just before he died. And I'm not going to read all of these, but it includes all the early Mormon ideas, such as man may, be got, may become God and God may become man. Atonement covenant was made here on earth. Plan of salvation agreed in a pre-existent father, son, and sons were men together in the pre-existence. Spiritual death was man's condition. This all came from the lectures, which I find is interesting. The Malchazdic priesthood is co-eternal with God. The priest, and that's the Babylonian priesthood, you know, it was a Babylonian king. But the Aaronic priesthood, which is the Jewish priesthood, was promised to all of Aaron's descendants. Hence, Aaronic priesthood was only allowed to be bishops in the Mormon church created by Joseph Smith. And you know, Joseph Smith's cousins were full-blooded Native Americans, Winnebago tribe through his aunt Honanega. Anyway, millions of peopled worlds, father argues for justice and son. So the whole controversy occurring at Dartmouth during this period of time was between Calvinism of predestination versus free agency of Arminianism and the free agent. And we, we know very well about free agency in the Mormon church. John Smith. So here's Lucy Mack in her history of the Smith family that Hiram entered into Moore's Academy in 1811. John Wheelock, president of Dartmouth and Moore's Academy, would have interviewed Hiram briefly at matriculation for the first of many periodic interviews, which would have him teach at Moore's Academy one day a week. This goes through and it talks about Hiram having to return home due to the typhoid fever hitting the family. However, he more than likely Hiram returned because he finished his studies up and became well acquainted with all of his cousins, Dr. Stones, Nathan Smith, Cyril Perkins from Dartmouth Medical School. These were the doctors that treated Joseph Smith and his leg infection. Oh yes, the Smiths, I mean, the, the Smiths were the preeminent scholars and intellect of their day. And here we have a Utah Brighamite church trying to continue on with the fraud. The Smiths were poor peasants and uneducated yahoos. Quite the opposite. They invented the entire idea of the Bering Strait and the Asiatic migration over from Asia into Americas. That was one of the Smith's theories. Okay, so Hiram would remain home for a year to attend homebound school and would tutor Joseph, who spent the next four years on crutches. And basically, Joseph Smith, later on in his life, was known to be a quick intellect. He was a 
masterful debater and a masterful theologian that people would pay money to go here preach. That's made Joseph Smith's reputation. Hiram Smith enters Moore's school. Hiram was able to return to Moore's Academy in 1814 as a charity scholar, a status shared by children of deceased members of the faculty, children of missionaries in the field, and those with promise to enter the ministry. Hiram's classmates included children of Drs. Nathan Smith and Cyrus Perkins, deceased Professor John Smith and John Harvard, as well as Wheelock relatives. Twenty of the classmates would graduate Dartmouth, and one Clement Lung would become professor of the would become professor of divinity at Dartmouth. Most of the schoolmate fathers were Masons including William Woodward, whose father, Beazal Woodward, founded the lodge in Hanover, and Father William Woodward became current head of the lodge. Each day, Hiram observed the federal architecture of the buildings on campus and the construction of the Dartmouth Hotel, which would be completed in 1814. Later buildings in Kirtland and in Nauvoo, which Hiram would be building as an overseer, bear a strong resemblance to these campus buildings. Hiram even had the opportunity to observe such notables as Daniel Webster, class of 1801, who had a house in Hanover, and Thaddeus Stevens, class of 1840, a powerful figure in the House of Representatives during the Reconstruction.